On this episode, we start an Internet of Things project. I want to start something new this week. We're going to try it. I don't know how it's going to play out, but I want to tackle an Internet of Things project. I'm going to try to post the video every day this week, and we're going to do a chunk every day, and I want to show how with just a little bit of time each day, we can actually build an Internet of Things device that you can play around with. And so the footage will be a little more raw. It won't be very polished because I'm going to try to film it in a single take uh, and go through this. So uh, it might not be as polished as I would like, but I just want to uh, go through this, and for those that have the the products that I'm going to use, it's going to be a particle photon and some other things. Uh, you can follow along and it's not meant to replace their documentation because they've done a really great job, but I feel like some people learn better when they see it through video and, and can be walked through uh, projects like that. So we're going to start that and so we'll cut away to that right now. Okay, so on the first day of our project here, all we're going to do is get our particle photon set up and ready to go for day two tomorrow. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it in to our laptop here uh, with our USB cable that comes with it. <clears throat> and at this point, if it's a brand new photon that you've never used before, the blue light will start flashing like you see here. Now, that means that it is in a mode that is ready to accept credentials to connect to a local Wi-Fi network. It is waiting to receive instructions. And if we actually come up to our Wi-Fi here, you'll see that I have this photon-wua7. That is the photon acting as an access point that you can connect directly to so that you can supply it Wi-Fi credentials. You can do this via their uh, mobile app that you can download from the App Store. However, I wanna go ahead and get started in the habit of just connecting it to your laptop. That's how you'll do most of the development. You'll just be connected straight to it until it's time to release it into the field where you can do over the air updates and things like that. And so to start, we're gonna come into a command uh, prompt here, terminal window, and you need to install a tool. So I assume that you already have Node.js installed and NPM. There's lots of instructions for doing that on any platform, whether it's Mac, Linux, or Windows. So that needs to be installed. Um, if you're having trouble with that, go ahead and hit me up in the comments below. I can um, link you up to some instructions for that, but they're pretty easy to find if you just Google it. And so what we'll need to do is we'll need to install a package. And I like to install it as global. So we'll do npm install dash g particle CLI, particle dash CLI like that. Now I already have this installed, so I'm not gonna run this command, but go ahead and run that. It will run through and install it for you. And then we are ready to start running commands. Now, if it's the first time that you plugged in your photon, you can just do a particle setup, which will walk you through all the steps that you need to um, to configure the Wi-Fi and set things up like that so it is ready to go. You'll claim the device through the uh, particle IDE and things like that. Now, I have already claimed this particular photon, so I don't need to do a full particle setup. And if you're in the same boat, at this point, you can just do a particle serial Wi-Fi. So at any time when you're in this state where the LED is flashing blue, you can run this command to give it credentials. So I'll hit enter and said, should I scan for nearby Wi-Fi networks? Yes, please. And this is my network right here, the SIDNET network. So I'll select it and hit enter. And it says, should I try to auto detect the wireless security type? Sure, why not? It's WPA2 in my case. And it detects that. And then it says, what's your password? So I will type that in. And hit enter. And you'll see the LED goes through several stages of blinking lights as it reboots and tries to connect. The flashing green says it's connecting to Wi-Fi. The flashing blue says it's trying to make a connection with the particle cloud. And the breathing scion, which is what they call it, is saying that I am now connected to the particle cloud and I'm ready to go. I can accept over the air updates. So that's great. So the next thing that we'll do is come over to the build IDE. This is Particle's cloud IDE. And you can access that by going to build.particle.io. And I have a sketch here that I was working on. This is from my Internet of Things pumpkin uh, project. But if you come over here to the devices 
tab. This is the sort of like um, scope marker. You'll see I have this photon connected called microcast underscore photon. And I will set that as my active by clicking on the star there. So now when I create firmware here, uh, it will flash that particular photon when I hit the uh, flash button up here. So let's go back to the code. And the easiest way to get started if you've never used a photon before is they have this example app section at the bottom. And we'll go ahead and click on blink and LED. This is an extremely well commented piece of code for the particle photon. It tells you everything. If you're brand new to this and you don't have experience using Arduino, um, which is a lot of how the programming language feels here, this will walk you through every single instruction that it is executing and what each of them does. I would suggest if you're new to this, give this a look. It's very helpful to, to understand what's going on. And so in this particular example, there's two LEDs, one connected to D0, which we do not have, and one connected to D7. Now D7 is a special LED on the photon. It is on board. And if you look at it, it is right next to the D7 IO pin. And so that is the LED that we are going to turn on and off. Uh, in addition to this D0, now it doesn't hurt to have this extra code in here that's trying to turn on an LED that we don't have connected. It just means that the GPIO pin, remember that's general purpose input output, is going to switch between high and low um, in our code down here. And you can see this uh, in the setup loop, we, uh, in, I'm sorry, in the setup function, we set the pin mode of LED1 and LED2 to output, meaning we're gonna treat them as digital output pins. And then in the loop, we are gonna do a digital write to both of them high, meaning we're gonna set the pin voltage to the high mode, which on the photon is 3.3 volts. We are going to delay for a second, and then we are gonna switch that GPIO pin back down to low and turn off our LED. That's all there is to it. And so if we come up here and we click on this flash button, okay, so the photon is going to program, that's what the flashing magenta means. Now it may go through several cycles of flashing magenta if it needs to update the core particle firmware on your photon, but then it will reset, you'll get the flashing green and scion and it'll reconnect to the particle cloud and you will see we have our flashing D7 onboard LED. And that's it, that's all we're gonna do for today. We have our photon connected to our laptop. We were able to give it some Wi-Fi credentials so it can connect to the particle cloud. We logged into the particle IDE, cloud IDE to uh, write some user code uh, or copy some user code in this case and push it down to our particle uh, photon over the air and that's it that's all we're going to do that should take you even if you have to install node and npm and create a new account with uh, particles website this whole process should take you about 20 to 25 minutes um, it's very quick and that's all it takes to get started with the particle photon. Um, there's no OS to load on it or anything like that like you would maybe have with like a Raspberry Pi. Um, that's it, you're set up and you're ready to go. And we're gonna go on to step two tomorrow where we're gonna connect some stuff to this. Um, and so each day we'll, we'll just add a little bit more so we can have a, an internet of things device by the end of the week. Now that brings us to the word of the day, which is firmware. Now, a lot of us are familiar with software, which is just this concept of code that we write and compile and run on a computer. Well, firmware is very similar. It is just um, code that you write, a lot of times in C or C++, or in the case of like the Photon and Arduino, it's a, uh, a version, it's a C-like language. Uh, that you then program onto a chip, like a microcontroller. And so very similar to software, the big difference is that it is directly programmed onto the end chip, whereas software, you know, goes onto a hard drive, it is read and executed by a CPU and things like that. The firmware is right on the chip. Those instructions, um, it's built into a file that the microcontroller can execute directly. And so that's, that's the difference. And so when you're writing this code and then you push it down to your particle photon, that is the firmware that is running on your photon. So that's the word of the day. If you have any questions about that, that was a super high level um, overview of what firmware is. But uh, just to be aware, so we're using the right uh, term. We don't write software to put on the photon, we write firmware. And so just a minor difference there. That does it for today's episode. Join us tomorrow. We're going to attach a light sensor. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of like a fridge eye 
project over the week and how in just a few minutes every day, by the end of the week, we'll have a full end-to-end -end Internet of Things device that you can play with. So I would encourage you, if you have a Photon and you followed along, to go through that uh, code that we just put on there in the IDE, maybe change the delay and things like that, maybe have the LED flash a bunch of times or do something interesting, just to get a feel for what the code is like and how, how simple it is to update that and then push it back down to your Photon. So if you have any comments or suggestions, please let me know uh, down in the comments section. Otherwise, thank you for watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning all about the Internet of Things one day at a time.